In exponent laws part one, we talked about the first couple of laws of exponents and they were the multiplication law where you have the same base and what do you do when you multiply exponent uh, powers that have the same base? What do you do with the exponents? How do you deal with that? And also the law of division. So uh, if you need more to know more about that, you can review that video, exponent laws part one. We're going to continue on here now to the uh, next laws. Uh, law three is really a combination of things, so it's it's uh, going to divide into three parts. Uh, first of all, we have um, a, we call it almost like a power of we call it power. It's often referred to as power of powers. The first part here, we've got uh, a power inside a bracket with an exponent on the outside of that. Here we have the uh, product. Here we have the uh, products, powers of products, and the powers of a quotient. Product meaning two things multiplied together here. In this case, two, two or more things that are divided. And so uh, that's what uh, we're going to talk about, these three things today. Um, first thing, let's talk about power of powers. Uh, let's just prove what's happening. I got this, equa this question, 5 squared uh, cubed. Well, it says in our in our example above with x a the b that you multiply the a and the b. So we're just going to we basically it says you multiply the a and the b together. In other words, you multiply these two things. And so we're going to try that. What if what if we just take a look at this five squared cubed? Uh, what does that mean? It means five squared. Okay, five squared times 5 squared times 5 squared. It means there's three of them. There's three of these 5 squares multiplied together. When I have 5 squared times 5 squared times 5 squared, that's the multiplication law. What happens when I'm multiplying powers that have the same base? Well, I just add the exponents. So that becomes 5 to the 2. Just add the, t add the exponents together. And what I get is I get 5 to the 6th. Well, that's the exact same thing as I get when I take 5 to the 2 times 3, put a dot there for times, five, 2 times 3 is 6. Those two are exactly the same thing, 5 to the 6th. So let's uh, prove the next, next example here. I've got a combination of things that are multiplied together. This is a, a product. A product of two things, I got a 3 and I got a 7 thirds, 7 to the power of 3, 7 cubed in other words. And so what happens here? Well, I could write that out again. 3 times 7 cubed, 3 times 7 cubed. I can draw, those are all multiplied together, so because, because it's all multiplied, I can drop the brackets and rearrange it. 3 times 3 times 7 cubed times 7 cubed. Well, 3 times 3 is just 3 squared. And 7 cubed times 7 cubed is 7. Add them together to the 6th. 3 plus 3 is 6 because I'm multiplying. The rule of multiplication says you add the exponents. Uh, but what this rule is showing us, we can take a shortcut. We can just realize that, hey, this just change color here quickly. If I have three times seven cubed, and that's squared. Now this is three to the one. Three to the one. I can put a one there. So what's happening is I can just multiply the exponents by the two on the outside. And what does that give me? Three. One times two is two, and seven. 2 times 3 is 6. Well, that's the exact same thing I just got. But this would be much easier as far as simpler. You just multiply the exponents. Just be careful that you multiply every part of the product inside the bracket, both, both the 3, the 1, and the 7 cubed uh, by the 2. We'll just multiply the 7 cubed. Make sure you do the 3 as well. Okay. So, um, Let's uh, 
put a line down here again and prove the next part. This is very similar to the last thing we just did. We are going to uh, take this question and what does it mean? It means 2 squared 3 to the fifth times, I can just drop the brackets, we're just times in here, uh, another 2 squared 3 to the fifth times another 2 squared 3 to the fifth. Well, when you multiply, you multiply the tops, you multiply the bottom. 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared is going to be 2 add the, I'm multiplying, so I add the exponents, 2 to the sixth. The bottom is going to be 3, 5, and 5, and 5 is 15. There's my final answer in exponential form. I'm not calculating or evaluating this. I put it in standard form, just even in exponential form. Okay, well, um, how does that, that work? Can I take a shortcut? I have to do that every time? Write it all out? No. All I need to do is if I have 2 squared over 3 to the, rewrite the question here, and the exponent on the outside, and it's a division on the inside, or a fraction is just the division. Okay, all I need to do here is multiply 3 times the, anything in the top, exponents there, and the exponents in the bottom. Multiply those. So what I get is 2, 2 times 3 is 6 in the top, the bottom, 3 times 5 is 15, so 3 to the 15. And once again, you notice that the answers, both methods, are exactly the same. So let's just do some examples here, show how this works. Other questions. Again, this first example here, power of powers, I'm just going to take the exponent, I'm going to multiply this and I get 9 to the 6th. 2 times 3 is 6. The next one, I'm going to do the two, same thing again. I'm going to take the 2, multiply the exponents in there. I'm not multiplying the 2 and the 7, I'm multiplying the exponents. So 2 to the 10th times 7 to the 6th. Here's your final answer there in exponential form. Uh, the next example has a multiple, it's 4 times negative 5 to the 4th, so it's got the times in this case, it's written as a little x. Uh, what is the exponent on the 4? Well, the exponent of the 4 is just 1. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to multiply that one. I'm going to multiply that one. And what I get is then 4 to the 1 times 5 is 5 times negative 5, leave it in the bracket, don't remove that inner bracket, and that's going to be 5 times 4 is 20. And there we go. We left it in exponential form. I can continue to simplify that with the, with the negative sign, take it, getting rid of that, and etc. But I'm just leaving it in exponential form uh, for now, because that's what we're trying to learn today. We're trying to show. Next example, a little bit different than the last ones. Okay, we've got 2 on the outside here. What does that mean? This means 2 times... Now, does that mean 2 times the negative sign? Or the negative sign is doubled or squared, in other words? It is not. So the negative sign is not affected by the square. What's being squared is the 2 cubed. It's what's in the bracket. So 2 cubed, this becomes 2 to the... 2 times 3 is 6. So negative 2 to the 6 is my final answer. It doesn't matter what the exponent is going to be there. The exponents are, it's always a negative answer in this case, because the negative is independent at the front. It's not a dependent variable. Okay, pull it down here. Again, so what's the uh, exponent on the 2 here? The exponent on the 2 is just 2 to the 1. The exponent on the 3 is just also 1. If there's no exponent, it means the exponent is a 1. I just write those in to help remember myself, otherwise it's easy to forget. Multiplying both the exponents by the 4, I get 2 to the 4 over 3 to the 4. Okay, I can evaluate it if I want, but I'm not going to at this point. Um, well, maybe I should. If I want to evaluate this, 2 to the 4 is what? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. And 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. And that's my final answer if I evaluate it. But 
we can just leave it in exponential form two to the fourth over three to the fourth. Okay. Um, next one. What's the answer to this one? Again, we're just going to multiply. Multiply the what? The exponents, not the four and the seven, but the exponents. So we have four to the two times three is six, and seven to the ten. And there is uh, the power of power rules. Oh, there's one more thing I should add here that before I forget, um, I'm just going to add this, and that is the um, zero. Okay, power. Okay, the exponent. Because we haven't talked about this yet in the screencast. Exponent zero. If I had um, six to the zero, what does that equals? Six to the zero is just one. In fact, the rule is anything to the zero is or equals one. So if I had the following, 187 to the zero equal to one. If I have a bracket, and I had five squ square root 256, and uh, x cubed, okay, something like that, all to the zero, that's equal to one. The whole thing is equal to one because the zero is on the bracket. Everything in the bracket just becomes one. One other quick example here. If I had this, negative two to the zero. Well, what is that? The zero is on the whole thing there. I get the answer of one. If I had this, what is the zero on? It's only on the two. It is not on the negative sign. The negative sign is independent because it's not in a bracket. Therefore, it's going to be negative. Two to the zero is one. And that's my uh, my answer to that one. So it's negative one because the negative is independent. It's not affected by the uh, exponent zero in this case because it's not in the bracket. And that is the last the part of this lesson on uh, the exponential laws, laws of exponents.